Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. Is a husband and wife. The husband had been drinking. They were in their house. She was in the bedroom. He came in, started to get aggressive. She was able to kind of kick him off. She grabbed her gun. He grabbed his gun. He shot her through the shoulder. She runs through the house, dripping blood and bio all over the place. Runs to her car. He starts shooting her in the car. So then she aims for him, hits him in the leg. She then runs to her neighbor's house. When she gets to her neighbor's house, they call the cops. He ends up barricading himself in the house. SWAT team arrives right here. They fire tear gas canisters all throughout the house. This is where most of the shooting kind of took place. This is all between the uh, and her. husband and the wife? Yep. About six weeks ago now, the backstory behind what happened is the is a husband and wife. The husband had been drinking. They were in their house. She was in the bedroom. He came in, um, started to get aggressive, and uh, ended up like biting her face, um, making her kind of bloody, hitting her. You say biting her face? Yeah, she bit her nose. Oh my God. Yeah, so like tried to like bite her nose and was like tearing it like a dog. Um, she was able to kind of kick him off. She grabbed her gun in self-defense. He grabbed his gun. She ran out, didn't shoot him. He shot her through the shoulder. She runs through the house, dripping blood and bio all over the place. Runs to her car in the garage. And the car's here and the door into the house from the garage is right here. He's standing out the door and uh, she gets in the car and realizes she doesn't have her keys, so she can't go anywhere. He starts shooting her in the car, so the car's got bullet holes all over it. She just pokes her, her gun out of the door right here and just fires to try to get him to stop, not trying to hit him. He, thinking that was gonna you know, make him run back inside, it doesn't, he keeps shooting at her and she's now thinking like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die unless I try to defend myself now. So then she aims for him, hits him in the leg, he runs in to the house and stays there. When he goes inside, she then runs uh, to her neighbor's house. This was during our snow week here in, in Nashville. So there was snow on the ground. So she's running barefoot with just a robe on, bleeding, shot in the arm, and it's out in the country. So she probably had to run about a half a mile to get to her neighbor's house through the woods and all that stuff. They call the cops. This is about eight at night, seven at night call the cops the cops come basically have a standoff all night cops realize that he's not gonna come out call the SWAT team SWAT team comes in at 6 in the morning backs their truck in shoots tear gas through all of the windows in the front upstairs and in the back it's called CS gas and what it does is it attacks your uh, like your mucus system your eyes so it makes you tear up you can't open your eyes snot just pours and runs out of your face and you're coughing you can't really breathe that well it's meant to make you feel like you're going to die it's not going to kill you um, it's not it's less than lethal that's that's the whole point of using it is you don't have to kill somebody in order to detain them so about 15 canisters total and uh and then bust the door down and, and go upstairs and find them he was hidden in the attic and that's where they that's where they ended up getting it so yeah, that's the backstory of kind of how all this all this happened. So did, did they arrest him or did they take him out? So they arrested him. Everybody survived and she's doing well. She's been going to rehab and, and all that stuff. And uh, her shoulder's getting good. She's she's tough as nails, man. And been nothing but good to us and nice to us, which is, you know, hard to do when you've just gone through a life-changing event like that, you know? She's doing, she's getting better. She's doing well. Wow. That is probably the most interesting story I've heard doing this job so far.
In the last two weeks we've dealt with, or I've dealt with probably five to six different subcontractors from textile cleaning, content cleaning, HVAC specialists, plumbers, electricians, um, and insulation removal to, uh, and then now we are finally able to start the full decon process of the house. Because everything's out, um, all the flooring's out, contents are out, everything's fixed that needs to be fixed. The last thing now to do is to, to decon the house. You've already cleaned the bio? This is our, we're going on our third week out there, so we've been out there for 15 days now. We cleaned up all the bio, um, and I can kind of show you, walk you around where most of that was. So what's the deconning process going to look like? We did the demo and removal yesterday and last, and Saturday. We, um, we applied a chemical that uh, neutralizes the tear gas, so it basically makes it um, not spicy anymore, which when you taste it, you know exactly why it's called spicy, because it just, uh, it gets in your eyes, in your skin, in your pores, in your mouth, and it's extremely uncomfortable. So what that chemical does is we spray it on every piece of, every piece of the house, so every square inch of the house, it sits, dries, and it kind of denutralizes or neutralizes the uh, the tear gas. So that way, if it does get kicked up in the air again, um, it's not as uh, aggressive or as intense for employees and myself as we're cleaning. It's basically baking soda um, mixed with water. How long have you had a franchise now? We are let's see, officially opened up August 1st of 2020. We're going on our eighth month. So we're young. Almost two a year, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, man. Hey guys, Gabe Crispin here, Spalding Decon Nashville, owner of this location. Today we're doing a tear gas and biohazard cleanup combination. What ended up happening here is husband and wife were um, in a domestic violence situation. Then when she gets to her neighbor's house, they call the cops. Cops come, this is early evening on a Sunday evening. Long story short, he ends up barricading himself in the house, uh, forces the police to call a SWAT team. SWAT team arrives right here in these tracks right here back up to the house they fire tear gas canisters basically in every window at the bottom floor and some up in the top floor so you can see here there's two or four uh tear gas canisters went through here one went through that octagon shaped window and two went through this window so if you're talking just on this bottom floor in this section of the house four one two seven tear gas canisters right here SWAT team then comes in they bust the door down. As they were uh, coming through the front door, they rammed it, I guess is the right word, breaking in through the uh, front door and then broke down this portion of the framing and drywall. So when they came in, what was probably happening is we found some smoke canisters as well, which knowing some you know military background, smoke canisters are used to conceal movement. So what they did is they threw a smoke canister out here in the front, put the tear gas in the house, pulled the SWAT team vehicle up. The smoke was billowing. The guys get out with gas mask on. You can't see them because of the smoke, so there's no chance of him leaning out of window and shooting any of them. They came in, popped it open. They've got uh, gas mask on, so the tear gas isn't affecting them. And they went through, cleared the house, and found him upstairs. Going to the house, what used to be here, we have four pictures of it, was couch, nice entertainment center, uh, wood flooring carpet, all that stuff. Tear gas canisters came through these two windows, hit one hit over here, and you can kind of see some of the material still on the wall right here. Um, so this room got hit pretty hard. Into the kitchen, into the sunroom. So as the SWAT team was coming in there, they also shot tear gas canisters through this room as well. So they shot them through this uh, door, through this window, hitting this wall over here and busting this drywall. So all of this pink right here, you can see is all tear gas uh, residue. What you can see on the, the windows right now and, and all this other material, this white stuff, uh, we've already applied uh, some chemical that basically neutralizes the tear gas. That's why we can be in here uh, without mask and without any eye protection and it not really affect us that bad. As we come into the kitchen, you'll see this is where she made her way out of the house. She went through here into the garage out the door and that's where her car was. So here you'll see different bullet holes all throughout the house. This is where most of the shooting kind of took place. This is all between the uh, and her. husband and wife? Yep. 
this is from one of the littles. Coming down the hall, we're going to this back bedroom first. This was one of the worst rooms as far as tear gas was concerned. You can see they busted the window down. Uh, had two or three canisters in here. I found I found two myself. One in here that went through uh, this window right here and then hit this back wall. And you can see right here where it went through what the drywall was here and hit right here. And that's the reason why we had to remove this wall. Come through here. Another one of the canisters who went through here came and hit this side of the wall. Um, so we had to remove this entire wall. Come out to the hallway. This is where a majority of the bio was because this is the master bedroom. So this is where the event started. This is where most of the bio was held here in the carpet that was right here. But there was a tremendous amount of blood here, trailed off into here and out the door into the hallway and then through the kitchen. So as you move through here, there was carpet on these steps. Um, there was blood every other step from the husband who barricaded himself in the house. Once the tear gas came in, I think that's when he moved up the steps, trying to get away from it. This room was hit pretty bad as well. A couple of canisters came through here, landed in here, and hit everything in here. One of the canisters hit here. You can tell, you see the remnants of it. We had a clean back. So hit there and hit there. Luckily, it didn't puncture the drywall, so we didn't have to remove that portion of the ceiling. The attic was kind of the last stand, so as the tear gas kind of got worse and worse in the house, this is kind of the breathing situation. He went in here, tried to barricade himself in there. Uh, that's where we found most of the blood and a lot of the tear gas uh, kind of remnants in there. So he came through here. Uh, there was a bio trail all around this room that we cleaned up. I'll show you some pictures. This is where we cut out a lot of the bio. So there was a big stain here, big stain here, and here. We had to cut that out and move that. And as you can that tell, that was just him bleeding at that point. Yeah. As you can tell, this is where the cops busted down this door to get in to find him. In here was all Christmas decorations, you know, typical attic stuff. Um, a lot of blood, a lot of bio, a lot of stuff that we had to remove, and a lot of insulation. So this was completely filled with insulation here and then blowing in insulation all through there and all the way back. So that's pretty much the gist, man. So what are we uh, focusing on today then? So today is, uh, we're finally at the part where we can do our decontamination process. We started yesterday with applying the neutralizing chemicals to make the tear gas less strong. And then today is purely chemical, scrub every square inch of the house and re rinse and repeat until uh, the effects of the tear gas are no longer existing in the house. You ready to get to work? Yep, ready to do it. So how, how does this compare to uh, other kind of verticals you do in this job as far as like hoarding and the bio cleanup? Is this your first tear gas job as well? Or? Yeah, this is my first tear gas job. I really like the the hoards best just because I'm that kind of pervert. I can, I can clean a hoard for eight hours and then go home and watch episodes of Hoarders until bedtime. This one's fun. I, every day is something different, so it's kind of what I like about it. Yeah, some of the challenges with this job. Uh, I'm five foot tall, so pretty much everything is a challenge. Dude, 
Oh, now you're just showing off your abs. So. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, it's just showing yeah. off. Yeah. All right, we've passed out. So, what? <laughs> well, I'm glad it happened to me because breaking some OSHA requirements going on right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from where we removed the HVAC, there's a hole in the floor up in the attic, and I was cleaning the rafter, looking up, looking up and I stepped back like this, stepped in the hole, and fell. And as I was falling, I fell this way and reached to save myself and just landed right on my ribs. So did, did you fall through or did well, you did Well, you one yourself? leg fell through oh, okay. and one leg was out. And then I was just like, Aah! and couldn't breathe. And I think I might've broke my ribs. Uh. When you're in these rooms, spray walls and just wipe the towels. Okay. I think that's, the rest of the house is gonna go so okay. much faster than that. There's towels in there. Ceilings still scrub and floor we still scrub. Okay, so I would just go white. Ceiling, white floors, and then do floors, and then just okay. work down like that. I'll be back. Okay. I'm just gonna go to the hospital. <laughs> you wait, you wanna show the scene of the crime? Yeah, it's right here. So, let's reenact. <laughs> I was doing this. White, 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 step, white, steps here. And then my foot fell through right there, you see where I was driving. And then my ribs hit somewhere in here. That's what happens. Yes, I will. Take like it first. Idiot. idiot. OSHA will be pissed. We should cover that up. <laughs> yeah. We're good. You don't fuck. Famous turkey call. Let's yeah. see if it works on that goose over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty good. <laughs> it takes a second to warm it yeah. up, but yeah. <laughs> My one hidden talent. What's your hidden talent? I can't say it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole upstairs is done, and the stairs. So oh, we got the downstairs to do. My name's Andrew. Um, I work for Spalding Decon. Uh, I've been doing it for a couple months. I got into it randomly <laughs> through a uh, just a, it was a gig to start with, and then ended up liking it. Nice, so nice. kept doing it. What was your background before this? Were you into uh, this renovations? Kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting work, so it's fun to do. So this is a Laura Spalding trick. Um, on the pieces of drywall that have paint on them, so like the tear gas paint, it's like that pink mist that we saw. Uh, she has a trick where you basically make a baking soda paste, mainly baking soda, a little bit of water, make it into a paste, and then you put it onto the wall where it is, where the tear gas paint is really bad, and then you um, come back, you should be able to clean it off, scrape it off, and it should remove all that paint. I've heard you can also shampoo with that. Give me a try. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, is that time of the week or? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? After today it might be. Yeah. Tear gas cleanup, baby. Flash. 
personal self care. Yeah, you can put this in your teeth. Yeah. You can put it in your hair. Put it on your drywall. Put it on your drywall. It looks kind of like tasty too. I don't know. I might want to. Cottage cheese. Yeah, I was gonna that say. Is. Yeah, cottage cheese or like rice pudding or yep, something exactly. like that. While you're at it, you can brush your teeth with it. That's right. Yeah, it's double edged. Was the tear gas starting to kind of ignite again when you were scrubbing it in the sunroom or? No, it was just. Uh, it really wasn't at all. So, which is good news. That means that the cleaning is working and the decon is working. It's just we can't quite get it off that drywall. Okay. So I want to try to save the drywall, which helps the insurance company not pay a ton and build back and all that stuff. Um, so in order to save the drywall, we might just have to remove some of the paint and hopefully this kind of gets that uh, tear gas out of there. <laughs> You like doing that too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually working better. Yeah. Pumping. There's a gross joke to be made here somewhere. But yeah, there is. Yeah. Here in the comments. Gross jokes. What's that? So many freaking cabinets. Smell test. Yeah. Yeah, kind of just walking around, see if I can see if in different rooms it affects like my eyes, my breathing. Basically, that's the first sign of we need to do more cleaning. So it's good right now. We're done. Day one, almost done. Uh, that back bedroom is the last one for today, and then we'll do the whole thing again tomorrow, at least one time. So somebody's gonna ask in the comments and stuff. Can you explain kind of why you guys didn't need PPE? This is the first day we haven't worn PPE. It's the first day I haven't worn a respirator gloves, all that stuff. The reason why is we've done a good job up to this point in getting rid of the tear gas. Really, other than the big spots, we could have probably stopped before this part. So now it's, you can walk in, can't smell it, it doesn't affect you. Now we're just making sure that there's no dormant line uh, remnants of the tear gas that could come up in two months, six months, a year. Now this is the attention to detail, the small little cracks inside the cabinets all that stuff. Wrapping up on day 15. Yeah. Yeah, we got the, we'll finish the last bedroom back there. The whole house will have been hit one time as far as the decon process goes, which is just the cleaning and the scrubbing that we've done today. And then tomorrow we'll do it again, maybe, or minimum of once, maybe two times tomorrow, depending on how quickly we get it done. Um, at this point, it's just more is better because uh, we can't, we have to pay attention to kind of the smaller spots. So those are easy to miss one time around. You, re you reduce the chances of missing spots do it two times we'll just even more if you do it three times so i'm gonna give a little uh see you guys tomorrow see you guys tomorrow bright and early thanks for watching today's episode we are sponsored by raycon let me tell you why i love these earbuds these are the everyday e25 noise isolating earbuds they're super compact look at the case here nice and small they give me six hours of continuous playtime and they're super awesome and simple to pair with my phone so i just put them in here you can hardly see them so i can actually tune out anybody that's speaking to me which is awesome love these things my raycon everyday e25 earbuds has decreased my screen time because now i'm listening to my audiobooks and my podcasts especially while i'm working and it breaks up my monotony to get 15 percent off go to buyraycon.com slash crime scene cleaning these are the only earbuds i can wear with my respirator because of those annoying straps you see how these wrap around my head here they can be super annoying so these are nice and snug and i can shake my head and nothing falls. I run with these, I cook with these, I hang out with these, I do everything with these Raycon E25 earbuds. They're awesome. For 15% off of your order, go to buyraycon.com slash crime scene cleaning or click the link in the description box. That's buyraycon.com slash crime scene cleaning. All right, guys, welcome to day two for you guys, day 16 for us. Today will be our final day in the decon process of the tear gas cleanup. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do another complete decon of the house, paying attention to the minute details and getting into the, the cabinets behind everything, making sure there is zero tear gas remnants left. Welcome to Tennessee on this rainy day, and let's get to it. So 
we had a big flood in Nashville area. So there's been an influx in kind of water restoration jobs. We have basically all of our drying equipment at an assisted living facility. And it's been there since Sunday. So we are going to pick those up because that job's done and, and we got everything back to normal and saved the carpet, saved the drywall, all that stuff because we were in there uh, quickly and we're able to get the water out and then start the drying process. So we're going to pick those up and then we're driving over Lebanon, Tennessee to do a, another water estimate. And then we'll head back to the tear gas house. Part of being a small business is kind of got to be on jobs right now. Um, but then also you got to try to grow the business. So going and completing this job and going to start another job while this job's going on is just kind of a uh, typical kind of day in the life right now. So thankful for any jobs we get really. We came in here on Sunday. We got a call on Sunday morning and we came right away. We were here within 30, 45 minutes. There was a standing water in here. So we brought our machines in, extracted all the water out, and then placed the fans that you see around here and the dehumidifier. They've been running now for three days, 72 hours, which is kind of the standard in the industry. Um, and each day we come back and get readings to make sure that what we're doing is working correctly and we're drying the, the building. So. This is the last day. I'm just checking to make sure everything's good to go. We'll turn these off, pick them up, and take them out. Okay, I have to give, I'm gonna give a shout out to Gabe, for real, because I'm the executive director here at Elmcroft, and in November, we were hit with 37 cases of COVID and seven deaths. And Gabe and the crew came out like immediately, didn't care what time of day it was, didn't care what time of night, what was going on. They got in like full blown go mode and helped move all of our residents, helped our staff. Um, help clean, help disinfect, and get us kind of back on track. And then when we moved all the residents back, he came back and did that. And then of course, with all of these crazy construction that we've been doing, he came and moved all of our offices, cleaned everything up, and he's gonna be, of course, back here doing all this restoration now. And then we're using him again next week. So we are literally Gabe fans for life. So awesome. I give him a good thumbs up. Biggest fan. Biggest fan, for real. How could you not love this guy? I mean, look at him. <laughs> My staff has appreciation for him, too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> not not for, obviously, what he does, but for yeah. what he looks like. Oh, of course. So, so yeah. Yes. How can you not have a crush on this guy? Every time. It's oh, like, yeah. every time. They come in through. <laughs> My ladies are lined up. He is, so. he is the GQ model of Spalding Decon. He Decom. definitely is. Yeah, y'all yeah, gotta put him on the cover. Oh, well, that's what this video is for. Trust yeah. me. there you go. How about that? That's why I love coming here. <laughs> In all seriousness, this place has been really good to us, and they've been a pleasure to, to help and work with and work for, especially during COVID. Particularly a sad situation, these assist living facilities during COVID. Um, not because any type of deaths or anything like that, it's just picking somebody up and moving them and all that stuff, especially the elderly, it was, it was sad sometimes. So we were happy to be here and help and disinfect and decontaminate as much as we could, and happy to help them when they have floods and moving and all that stuff. A couple weeks ago, I uh, slammed those the opposite way. You see uh, what I'm saying? So yeah. now I have to use this or else I'm scared the doors are just gonna. <laughs> have Michelle and Sarah look at your okay. ribs because. Help me. <laughs> help me. Help, help me. I don't think they're broken, but they are murdering me. They hurt you. Ooh, how did you get a scratch? That's from where I fell. Oh, what's oh, what's oh my God. Does it hurt to yeah. off breathing? Yeah. You want a lidocaine patch to put on it? Absolutely. Right here. That's good. You're awesome. You are clear for takeoff. Lifesaver. Thank you so much. You are very Now welcome. we can get back to work. I thought at first you said Vicodin patch. I was like, <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> are you from Nashville, Gabe? I'm not, man. I'm from, I was born in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Then I went to college in New York and graduated from there and then moved to Georgia. Stayed there for about two years, then moved to El Paso, Texas. Stayed there for about three years, then moved to Columbia, South Carolina. Stayed there for a year and then moved to Nashville, Clarksville area. You had a military career during some of that, right? Yeah, so that's why there was so much moving. So I was in the Army for about seven years. I was a infantry officer. Um, did the majority of my time out at Fort Bliss, Texas. Um, did a deployment to Afghanistan, 
came back, stayed in El Paso for a little bit, and then went to uh, South Carolina, Fort Jackson for my last year, uh, and then got out from there. I'm super glad I went. I learned a lot, got, had a lot of opportunities, met a lot of great people. Some of my best friends are still from, you know, in the Army and from West Point and all that stuff. It provided me with a lot of opportunities at a young age that I probably wouldn't have gotten if I went somewhere else. Um, but I'm also glad to, to be done with it and uh, not be there anymore and not be in the Army anymore um, and start this chapter. So. Two, four, six, seven. Three they were behind guys. the RV for like cover. Like, fuck. Fuck. Three times. <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> like, so, so where'd you find them? Is behind, they were behind the RV all in one spot, which is like over that way on the other side of the bonus yeah, room. I thought it was fireworks from like the New Year or something. I didn't even like look at them closely. I like kicked one. I was like, oh, that's all CS. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Can you uh, explain what you're doing here right now? Yeah, so I don't know if this is proper standard. Oh, okay. But the reason why we're doing this so makes sense to me is, is this is porous material. So the plastic, we can't get this these stains out. Now it's neutralized and clean as much as we can, but we just want to, these are going to have to be replaced anyways when they rebuild. So what we're doing is basically just covering up any of the parts just in case somebody puts their hands on it or probably not needed, but it's an extra added layer of protection until they replace these windows. So can that be replaced as well? Or? Yeah, this will have to be replaced. Now we ripped the entire, well not we, but an HVAC company removed the whole HVAC system and all the ductwork. So this additional is going to be nothing. So we're wrapping up on this job all in all. How did it go? It went great, man. It was a beast and a half. It took us 16 days straight. We worked pretty much every day of those 16 days, weekends included. You know, we don't have to do that, but my biggest thing was the owner of this house is as sweet as she can be. And she's been nothing but nice and good to us while we were working. And she's in a hotel and her life is completely disrupted. And my goal was to get the house deconned as quickly as possible, but doing it the right way. Uh, so that way we can get our contractors in here to start the, the rebuild process, which can just get her back in her home as quick as possible. So, All right, how would you rate your first uh, filming of a crime scene cleaning episode? Uh, it was awesome, man. You got to come in, see some tear gas. We did some, some water jobs. We're about to go do a little interview with a crime scene we cleaned up a couple days ago. So it was busy, but it was perfect, man. I appreciate you coming down. Say bye to your, your new fans. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram. It's Paul and Decon Nash. We got some good content. We'll see you next time, Gabe. See you guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.